And it looks like we're live. Welcome back again here to the demo room here in Shista. Uh, for the second session, we have regarding a bit more focus on a few of the camera series we have here uh, mentioned in the previous session. Uh, it's me and Jimmy here today. Jimmy? Hello. Hello. Uh, Jimmy will also be helping out with some of the demonstrations we will be doing today because today we are having a mix of uh, PowerPoint some commercial videos I would like to show you, and also some demonstration of scenario that we try to make as similar to real life environment as possible. But let's see how we manage to do that. Uh, this session about 3000i series and the Flexidom 8000i is looking into two of the families of our products that we see have a really nice position in the market. That is why we'd like to focus on these ones for today's session. Starting with the 3000i series, this is a pretty new family within the Bosch fixed camera range. Uh, and this is the place where we first, for the first time, actually bring essential analytics and video intelligence into the entry-level cameras from Bosch. And it's the first time we have a solution that is really cost-effective when it comes to adding this extra value for your cameras. And that is something we feel is really important. Looking into this uh, family of cameras, or perhaps the extended family of cameras, where you see some cousins and some siblings, what we're going to focus on today, uh, first of all, is the 3000i series. I as intelligent. You see them also being clustered in the essential video analytics part, in an indoor form factor and in outdoor form factors. That will also be mentioned in a short while. The family itself contains out of four members. It's the Micro, the Flexidum Micro, the Flexidum IP3000 Infrared, it's the Flexidum IP Turret 3000 i Infrared, and the Dinion IP3000 Infrared. All cameras have an eye, stating they are intelligent cameras. And intelligence is both regarding the video analytics we have in the cameras and also when it comes to how to secure the data and how to uh, minimize, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> minimize the bitrate used by the cameras to produce a very good image quality at low bitrates. So the I in the intelligence stands both for the intelligence when it comes to analytics and how to create a good video feed at the low bitrate. Let's start with the 3000 I series, going for the micro. Uh, the Microdome is the uh, smallest one we have. Uh, it's a very small form factor. It comes in 1080p resolution and in 5 megapixel resolution. It's actually a little bit higher than 5 megapixel, but we claim to have a 5 megapixel camera. Available in a HDR range mode as well, so you can make it out of 120 dB. 30 frames per second, and it's very nice one when it comes to choosing some of the models with a very wide field of view up to 132 degrees actually, and it has built-in essential analytics. Next family member, the Flexidum IP3000i Infrared. This is the, I should say, the most used product we have in this range of the cameras. It is very popular. It's used in several different environments. It's used often indoors and outdoors. It's a fully blown outdoor unit. You can see it has the same functionality and the same features when it comes to resolution, the HDR values, but it has a different lens. It has an AVF lens. We will cover that one a little bit later. Uh, different versions when it comes to 2 megapixel and 5 megapixel, different viewing angles, field of view, but those ones are really suitable for the most types of installations in the market, and it has built-in essential analytics. That was two out of the three members in the family. Next one. This is interesting for me because this is the first time we get a turret camera into our series. This turret camera has very much similarities with the Microdome. It's not regarding the form factor, but the components used in there are much the same as we have in the Micro, but with one big difference. It has built-in infrared illuminations up to 15 meters. Also, you have a, different pos a few different versions of the lenses, you can go up to 132 degrees field of view, and it has essential analytics. I'm mentioning analytics quite often, 
And you will be able to watch the webinar regarding essential analytics and intelligent analytics and also the camera trainer one that we will have coming up for you as well. So if you would like to know more about those ones, please stay tuned and look into the webinars coming up. I will mention briefly after these slides what we consider essential analytics to be, but since I mention it so often, I think it's good to make a point out of it. So the turret is a new baby in the family. Pretty newborn, actually. Uh, Dinion bullets, the Dinion IP bullet 3000i infrared, it's a really nice outdoor camera. It has nice power to its infrared, it goes up to 30 meters. Same lenses, same sensors as in the Flexidome, so you can see we have 33 to 104 and 30 to 89 degrees, and it has built-in essential analytics. And this one is for outdoor use as well, IK10 and IP66. These four form factors is covering quite a lot of what we're using in the market today. And the essential analytic parts that I've been mentioning, I would like to show you three few small examples of what you can do with it. So for example, the essential analytics can be used in an indoor environment for finding out if somebody has put stuff or things in a place where they shouldn't be. At this part, you can see that somebody's putting a pallet outside an emergency exit and not supposed to be there. So a camera with essential analytics can make an alarm of this. Another thing is it can do counting. It can do people counting, it can do object counting, it has several different types of counting algorithms in the camera as well. Another one is for perhaps making a solution where the camera should detect parked cars in an outdoor environment. Essential analytics is good enough to use in sterile zones. If you don't have a lot of movement, if you don't have a lot of interference from the um, environment, you can use essential analytics to do this. If you really need the most rugged an algorithm when it comes to analytics, you might need to step into the IVA, the Intelligent Video Analytics. But for these kinds of sterile zones in restricted areas, we think that essential is good enough. Is this an entry-level camera with poor image quality and bad performance? No. On the contrary, I mentioned in the session about fixed cameras that this perhaps was a bit too good. Uh, that's perhaps a big thing to say, but it's so good. This is uh, some examples showing not a commercial video, it's the real live video feed from one of the cameras from our office in Eindhoven demonstrating a HDR scene where you have a strong backlit background and you need to also to be able to identify the people walking in through the door. So it's not the fake video, it's the actual footage from a 3000i series camera. We're also having, and you will see <laughs> this one as well, popping up a couple of different times, the bitrate management that is the same in the 3000 series cameras as in the 8000 and 9000. It's really something we're focusing very hard on. So we're focusing on getting the intelligence to remove the bitrate, lower the bitrate, but still keep the image quality in the video feed. And that's really hard to do, but we're Investing a lot on this one, and we think we do it in a very good way. The other thing that you will see a couple of different times, it's the data security part. You will see the same slides coming up in many, many of my presentations. It starts in the 3000 series, it goes through 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and it's the same. Regardless if you have an entry-level camera in the 3000 series, and if you have a metal Mickey 9000i, you will have the same type of data security measures. Built-in hardware components to do this in a very professional way using the industry standards of data and cybersecurity. I would like to now go into another family member of this big family of cameras. It's the Flexidum IP Starlight 8000i. We started to show you and demonstrate the 3000i series as the entry level. Now we take a huge step, leap over the other family members and go to the 8000i, because this is really the high runner we have here in the, in the family. It's not just another flexidome. This one, and I will explain why in a few slides, it belongs to the same family. It has all the siblings and the cousins and whatever. But we are now reaching over to a camera that has a completely different feature set. It has a completely different use case 
and it's one of the camera that you can really start comparing the total cost of ownership comparing to other cameras in the portfolio. I will not go into the details here. Uh, you will have this one also later on in the presentation itself. It mentioned a few things about the characteristics and the most unique features in the camera. But I will mention them in a separate slide, each and every one of them. First of all, it's a camera made for high quality imaging. It has the lenses, it has its components, it has really the, all the best components we could find to create a camera with as good image quality as possible. Uh, we, it comes in three different resolutions, 2 megapixel, 6 megapixel and 4K, 8 megapixel. And we're also going to increase the family of products with a new lens coming up in a few months where we have the ability to make some new installations where we also need the 4K camera in situations where you need to have a better zoom ratio. So that one will come up in a few months. Uh, the camera has built-in MEMS sensors, small gyro sensors to know how the roll, the pitch, the tilt, the angle and everything related to the camera lens. So we will be able to use that for several of the setups later on. We also are going to demonstrate this when Jim is setting up the camera in, in, a, in a few minutes. So it's a really high performance camera with the different lenses and the different options that you need. Why do we consider this to be completely new when it comes to total cost of ownership and installation? Yes, we have made a huge investment in trying to get this camera to be really installation friendly. Uh, the concept has a couple of different parts. It's, first of all, it's really reducing the installation and commissioning time. And we have tested it and we're, we're aware of it. The remote commissioning of the camera can be done in several different ways. The camera has a built-in Wi-Fi interface. We have the possibility to connect it through the remote portal that you saw briefly in the session about fixed cameras. The accessories, a few of them are new, and also you can use the same accessories for this camera as you can with the 3, 4 and 5000. The Project Assistant app, or the Project Assistant tool, this will be a separate session, but we will show you a bit about it today, uh, setting up a single camera. We showed you a teaser in the fixed camera presentation, and we will mention it and demonstrate it quite soon as well. And the calibration. Calibration is used for the camera's video analytics to know how its area is looking at, to make a 3D scene, a th three-dimensional scene, so it knows the size, the speeds of all the objects that is moving. And this camera has built-in automatic calibration. The only thing you need to set is the height of the camera. So that's a bit about the installation concept. Um, well. This is the picture of how it looks like, but I can show you in real life because I have a few of these parts here with me in the, in the demo room. So what we have is, first of all, the installation plate. This one can be used in the building and the construction of a building, for example. You use this one, you install it at that point, can be done by, for example, the building contractor. Next part is the uh, surface mount box with the connections. And in this connection box, you have all the connections you need. It's the IP interface, it's the connector for the camera that later on will be in the camera module itself. It's the alarm inputs, it's the outputs, it's the audio, and all the in and outputs you need is here. It also has a 12 volt output, so you can actually feed something that doesn't contain, that doesn't consume too much power in this camera. So first you have somebody installing the base plate. Then you have somebody installing the surface mount box. And finally, you have somebody coming with the actual camera module. And in this one, you also have the place to put SD cards. I will talk a bit more about the SD cards in a short while, but this is really something important. This camera can have two SD cards, can be run in a few different modes, but it's really simple to use this. And by this, the only thing you need today, it's a camera. It's a couple of SD cards, a few nice softwares from Bosch, and you're up and running. You don't need more than that. If we then add the product assistant tool and the remote portal, you will have a very nice way of commissioning and setting up your system. So that's the part of the actual installation. Um, perhaps you remember this one. 
uh, in the time when I started doing this in 1987, I started to work with cameras. I actually used tube cameras, not CCD cameras and CMOS cameras. So, but you probably have seen this one before. Going from setting up manual focuses on lenses, you're using AVF lenses, the automatic varifocal lenses, where you can set focus and also the field of view, going into what we have in the 8000i. It's fully remotely commissioning with PTR set, pan, tilt, roll and zoom. You can do all image settings of your camera remotely. You don't need to be climbing a ladder. You don't need to be having the situation where you are depending on a colleague or something. So what we used to do yesterday or the day before or whenever, we were using an analog out monitor output. We had an installation tool. We had uh, instruction from somebody sitting in the control room or an assisting technician. Anybody of you remember? No. Too much to the right. Go left, 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 left. Stop. Too much. Back to right. No, too much. Up, down. Now out of focus. That one is gone. What you can do now is you can use the Flexidum 8000i with this com commissioning concept and either you do it remotely by using the Wi-Fi interface in the camera. Use a tablet device, a mobile phone or a PC to do this. Or you are sitting comfortably somewhere else on the network if you have network connectivity with that one and do it remotely. It's really a completely different way of setting up a camera. You can also start dividing resources. For example, you can have some type of resources for some parts of the installation. You remember the base plate could be done by the construction people setting up building the building. Installation can be different parts of resources, either installing the surface mount box or the camera itself. And third part could be somebody doing commissioning. Could be either on site or could be by somebody sitting on the network. Could be somebody using the Bosch configuration manager. Could be somebody using the project assistant tool you will see soon. Could be somebody using either project assistant tool or configuration manager through the remote portal. This is up to you. Depending on how your infrastructure looks like, how the, the way you're structurizing your installations, this is up to you to decide. But we will give you the tools to do this in a simple and smart way. So first, I would like to show you a commercial video about how we as Bosch is considering this uh, installation concept. That's enough of presentations and videos right now. Now it's time for demonstration. Uh, what we will demonstrate, me and Jimmy, is that Jimmy is on site in a kind of a typical situation for an installer, hopefully. Uh, he will demonstrate uh, bits and pieces on how to set up a Flexidum 8000i on site with an iPad. So now it will be over to Jimmy on site. I am now on site and will use the built-in Wi-Fi in the camera to configure the camera with Project Assistant app. I select camera, I connect via Wi-Fi to connect to the built-in Wi-Fi. I will scan the QR code which have all the information about the Wi-Fi and the password for the Wi-Fi. I press connect and connecting to the camera. Now I can see the camera and I can select the camera.
and now we are connected to the camera and can continue our configuration. So now you can see the overview and the free menus to configure it the camera. We go into the basic setup menu, name the camera, we define a password we can also set the user and live password here as well we can also set network and time synchronization server I agree to the settings the settings have now been activated in the camera and time synchronization has been done so I am going back to the overview and go into the image settings. In the image settings you can see the live video. You can change the sensor mode. I will change to HDR. You can also change the uh, scene mode if you want to use another mode than standard. It's also possible to open the settings in a web browser to get all the configuration that you can do in the camera. I will now go into alignment and point in the area where I want the camera to be centered and the camera will also use its built-in sensors to adjust the horizon of the picture. If I'm want to zoom in I can also select the camera by dragging in the image and the camera will adjust and zoom in for that view. What I can also do from here is the calibration of the camera. I select the height in meters and the camera is also using its built-in sensors to know how the camera is mounted so it can start doing video analytics. In the focus menu I can do more of the zoom and focus if I'm not happy and I can also press the autofocus if I'm not happy with how the picture looks like. Now I can go back and go into the remote portal to configure the remote portal to be able to remotely connect to the camera from wherever I are. I select on, enter my email account and I add my password and then I press register waiting for the camera to get registered on the remote portal registration has now been done and I can connect to the camera from wherever I am and then now the camera is configured so to continue this demonstration part uh, we're going to do some time shifting now. Just imagine a couple of days have passed, a couple of weeks have passed, and now I am acting as the end user. The end user who has got this uh, nice software called uh, Video Security Client on his iPad has, yeah, he was kind of aware what he was ordering initially, but now when he's looking at the backside, the backyard from, from his building, he says, this is not really exactly what I wanted to have. I, I'm not blaming Jimmy because he was uh, just doing as he was supposed to. But I need to give Jimmy a call to help me out and fix this one. And in many, many times you usually have to go on site. But with the 8000i, with the PTR set and the remote portal connection, we will be able to do this um, remotely. So doing this, it's back to Jimmy again. Yes. So now I'm sitting here with the configuration manager. And I did connect to the Bosch remote portal through the configuration manager and I have access to the camera I configured through the iPad. And this <coughs> is something we will show in detail in the, in the next session we will have with the project assistant tool and the remote portal as well. So, but this is just to give you a heads up how it can look like. Yes. And here I can do all the configuration that I can do normally if I am local on the system. I did a uh, open the camera view wizard 
and I came from here, redirect the camera and make the customer happy and select the area I want to see. I clicked in the image, so the camera is again adjusting after the sensors and I can now see the correct side of the building. If I would like to, I can do like on the iPad, I can zoom in a little bit and do the focus as well. Okay, and now I'm as pretending, of course, to be the customer. Yes. And the customer is always happy when Jimmy has helped them to fix all his issues, right? Yes. Yes, that's fine. At least in, in this demonstration world, in a semi real life situation as it is. Okay, so hopefully you got the idea what we, what we were trying to create here. It's a situation perhaps not exactly in real life, but it's perhaps pretty close. But the ability to be able to commission and install your camera in different steps with different types of resources, to use different types of knowledge when it comes to installing, commissioning, doing all that stuff, and also as I explained later on, we will show you a bit what you can do with the configuration. So we think it's a very nice way to get the installation very, very cost effective. And also the total cost of ownership if you have needs to change your setup, for example. Other things that we have created for this camera, uh, we have created a few new accessories that hasn't been here before. It's a weather protector, it's the different types of installation parts for in ceiling mount. We have a paintable cover and we have this really nice surveillance cabinet that is also the same one for, guess what, 3000 i series, 4000, 5000, 6000. It's the same accessories and in this one you can contain different types of uh, power supplies and you can also contain a optical fiber interface. So you can use optical ethernet fiber interfaces into this box as well. So it's a really nice way of adding structure into your different accessories. One thing, and this slide is focusing on a few of the USPs for the camera that we think is really important. It's a camera that is created to be robust. It's for all different environments. The wireless interface we've already been talking about, and I was mentioning the SD card support. This camera Jimmy installed as the installer has right now one SD card, but we could use it with even two SD cards. What we're doing is that we are using industrial graded SD cards, hopefully, because these ones will give you the ability for the SD card to communicate with the camera to tell the camera if it has some kind of malfunction in the SD card. Today industrial SD cards are really good, they have a long lifetime, and they're also being able to tell the camera if it has an issue. So what we can do is to have different types of recording. It could be yeah, just increased recording, you can have redundant modes, it could be failover. And also, if you use the industrial graded SD cards from Bosch, you will have three years of warranty because we use the Sony cards. So that is what we really see. We can use the camera without a recording solution on a server. We can use it on the SD card and you don't need any other software than the video security client on your iPad, for example. This is pretty self-explaining when it comes to the camera quality, the image quality, the whatever you know from a Bosch camera from before. The high resolution part, we're going up to 4K, 8 megapixels, starlight technology, high dynamic range in the camera, being able to catch high frame rates to be able to capture these fast moving objects. Um, of course, you can always count on, if you're using a Bosch camera, you know it has a really good image quality. In these ones going up to high resolutions, we also put a lot of focus to have these lenses that really provides you the resolu resolution you need for a 4K camera. There are so many cameras out there on the market stating 4K resolution and have a lens that doesn't even provide half. So that is about the resolution in the camera. Starlight technology, something we also use in the cameras, uh, be able to create these low light scenes where you have objects in very low level of light, being able to do both video analytics and generating useful pictures. HDR scenes, high dynamic range, 
the possibility to catch the details both in the highlight areas and the low light areas at the same time, what we call HDR from Bosch. That is one thing. And also to be able to generate all these images at high speeds. Video analytics. As I told you, separate session. This is the intelligent video analytics we have in the 8000 series. In the 3000, we had the essential ones. What about intelligence? Yeah, please visit us at the next webinar when we're doing intelligent analytics and essential analytics. We will show you the difference. But a quick one. Low light environment. You have a lot of interference from trees, branches, whatever. You have lighting area, uh, areas with much light, areas with low light, and the camera will anyway be able to capture and generate alarms regarding that one. So it's really something that is even better in an intelligent analytics camera than in an essential one. You can also do a lot of more things when it comes to setting up rules, when it comes to go longer distances. For example, using an IVA camera instead of an essential video analytics camera will give you the extra distance to go with your analytic solution even further than you can do with an essential one. So that's also one thing that differentiates the different series within Bosch. If you go for the 3000, 4000, 5000, 6000 and up to the 7, 8 and 9000 series. It's how long you can do your video analytics. All of these things when you have that in the camera. Now coming to a few slides that you've seen before. I hope it's not a surprise for you because bitrate management, yes, it's the same in the 8000 series as in the 3000 series. Data security, same. Same firmware, same possibilities. We're using the hardware components to do this, also in the 8000 series. So what I would like to end now in this uh, presentation is to give you a kind of a roundup when it comes to the features. Uh, I will also encourage you to join the other webinars we will do because we will cover, for example, the remote portal, the project assistant, the analytics part when it comes to fixed cameras, and also some other tools that are really important for you as a system integrator or a distributor or an end user to get your solution to what you really are expecting. That's about everything from us today. So thank you from me and from Jimmy. Uh, I hope to see you soon in another webinar. So stay tuned and stay safe. And thank you from us. <laughs>